It's unstable to be with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. Do you know what's driving me nuts lately? Acorns. Close. Mosquitoes. Oh, they yeah. They are coming for me. And what's bothering me is they're coming for my children. Mm-hmm. And they're inside the house. And mm-hmm. I am so over mosquitoes. Over it. And we There's spray like the, stuff, one the, yard, the stuff in the yard. You, oh, did, yeah, because you used to have that at your old house. You had, like, mosquito spray. Did we it did. work? We, it worked. It worked well. But we spray stuff now, like, you can buy, attach it to your hose and stuff. Oh, yeah. And you, mm-hmm. We have such a big yard, and we've gotten a lot of rain, so then there's water everywhere, and our children love water play, and I'm like, that's just mosquitoes. I know. I know. I have a neighbor who is, like, on a mission to stop mosquitoes from who is this neighbor and how can i support them well he's very good he goes around and he has actually in his backyard like a helium tank because i guess there's like something about helium can keep mosquitoes away and then he has spread like the mosquito gospel about like you know you think that it's big puddles of water but they breed in things as small as like an overturned bottle cap like it's really really hard to stop them and i think they're called like tiger mosquitoes over in our area and they are nasty and they're resilient and they so suck do with- your blood and they suck my patients what is this helium do i just need to blow up a lot of balloons and then like no them, like, i don't really know the yard <laughs> i don't really know it's like in his backyard <laughs> this huge helium tank and it's like connected to something You'd have to Google it. I'm sure there's someone here who like knows what the deal is, but um, I think that's interesting. He's really innovating on how he that's really cool is stopping mosquitoes. If he wants a testing ground, please let him know my backyard is open for that. Yeah, because my children love outside, which is great. I know your child, you you want this, but I'm an in inside person. You're an you know, cat. Yeah, I'm an inside cat. I like hiking. I like doing those things. But like I like hiking in Colorado where it's nice and cool and beautiful. I don't like mosquito land, you know? I know. Th- that is like my big deterrent for being outside is bugs. But you know what else mm-hmm. I did last summer that worked really well? Those bracelets. Did they? Those worked really well. And then I want to try the stickers that you just like put a sticker on. I think I'm going to invest in that because the mosquitoes have already taken over and uh, mm-hmm. my children look like little mosquito sample platters. Oh, same, same. I tried the bands last year, and they didn't work for Walter. Uh, and yeah. But maybe it's different. I've I've been targeted those stickers, and I've also I'm going to buy this mosquito lotion that you put on your body and you Ooh. rub in. So, because again, I know we talked about sunscreen and a couple episodes ago, bug spray is also a hot mom guilt topic because you can't just buy the off. And a lot of times if you have small children, you can't buy it anyways because it's not safe for them. So you have to look for this natural bug spray that probably doesn't work as well as like the good old off. Yeah. My pediatrician said off is fine. She said Oh. Yeah, it's better than a bug bite. Give them the off. So do you just do like that's regular a doctor's off? order? Yeah, you don't even. That's need a doctor's this. order. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not like so intense, you have- like over eight percent DEET or something. Yeah, but most of it's them the I've looked portion. But I've looked at all of the labels, and they're all within the within the safe range for kids. So I don't think so that works. Have- that just makes me feel sticky and smelly, though. So I'm interested in the stickers because I don't like the smell of bug spray or the stick of bug spray or lotion. Like, oh, oh. You know. our bug spray that I have that works pretty well um, doesn't isn't sticky at all. It's really nice, but it also doesn't have like mm-hmm. the DEET stuff in it. Yeah, I remember My you sent also me that. have bug bites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works yes. well. It used to work <laughs> really well. Like there last summer, no mosquito issues. But now this year, and I think though, I think what it is, Maggie, that the mosquito, and I'm saying it's probably one, it's probably one jerk of a mosquito is in my house. So I'm not mm. going to spray them if they're inside. 
and he's getting his bug bites in the morning. I'm like, you haven't even been outside yet. I know. There's a mosquito. There's a jerk inside this house. Yeah. The bug is <sighs> coming from inside the house. Yes. <laughs> you know what I don't hate, Maggie? What's that? Or doing facts. It's doing facts with you. I love facts with you. Would you like a fact, Maggie? I'd love a fact. Please give me a fact. What do Miss Piggy and Yoda have in common? They are both voiced by the same person, puppeteer Frank Oz. Wow. Wow, Maggie. Wow. Piggy and Yoda? Miss Piggy and Yoda, both that voiced makes sense, by I guess, the kind of, yeah. I'm trying to think of their voices. Famous puppeteer. Frank, Frank Oz, Oz is insanely, yeah. Frank Oz is insanely talented and notorious and well-known in the film community. So for, I for it's, puppeteering. Yes. Right. Well, who else does he do? Does he do anyone else? I didn't. I mean. I mean, Yoda's kind of Miss Piggy. I mean, <laughs> make it, it's... I mean, but he only does the voices for both of them, or those are just two. Like you would never guess, the same guy does the voices for these two, or does he do the voices just... for a lot more? Oh, jeez, Maggie. I mean, do you want to get? I mean, yes, I'm sure he does. But Miss Piggy, and he's he's best known for his involvement with Jim Henson and the Muppets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, did you have you never heard of Frank Oz? No, it sounds familiar, but I think I was thinking of Dr. Oz and Frank Ocean. I think I was combining <laughs> those gosh. two names. I can't believe you've never heard of Frank Oz. Yeah, he's he's No, I think I've I I I feel like I've heard you? of Frank Oz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah okay, for sure. knowing who he is and hurry, Frank hearing Oz. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad Frank Oz. Oh, yeah, this guy I, with those glasses. I mean, you've you've watched Star Wars, right? I have, um, you know, I n understand the idea. No, no, Maggie, you have never watched a single Star you're Wars. You're trying to get out of this because you're trying to get out of this because I asked you who else Frank Oz did, and you did not mention Fozzie Bear, Grover, Cookie Monster, Sam the Eagle, or Animal. Well, in all fairness, those are very close to Yoda. I mean, you, but you wouldn't know because you've never seen Star Wars. And my fact, which I found, specifically referenced Miss P. You look, Maggie. It's okay to say you haven't done something or you don't know someone. I have. It's, so here's the fun thing about Star Wars. I'll go back to Star Wars. Fine. Um, when I was in high school, so I hadn't seen Star Wars. Um, and then there was this guy that like. We wanted to be our friend and he loved Star Wars. So mm -hmm. Rima and I were like, hey, we've never seen Star Wars. And so we invited him over to watch all of the Star Wars with us. And we baked cookies. We were like, we're going to make him be our friend. And then he was like an hour and a half late. And then just like brought all the like he brought all the Star Wars. But we like could not even watch it because we were just trying to get to know him. We were like, so like, what are you into? And he's like watching this movie. We were like, well, la, 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 la. Anyways, I couldn't like well, tell you what happens in each episode, but I feel like everyone well, knows me, the idea of Star Wars. How many Star Wars, you keep saying episode, like start, we watched all the Star Wars. So I'm curious as to how many you think that is. Aren't there eight? There's the original and then there's the prequels. Well, well. If you're going to get into the, the quote-unquote originals the happen original in the three. middle of the story. Yeah. yeah but they so happen in a, the middle mm -hmm. of the story. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's mm -hmm. three prequels? Uh, it depends. If you're counting things like Rogue mm -hmm. and all the offshoots. Mm -hmm. And then there's The Mandalorian, which is a whole other world spinoff. It's a whole other vein. Right. So it's kind of hard to say like how many there are because there are like, you know, are you Googling? There are a lot. Are you Googling? Yeah. How many? I am because I wanted to see. So you have, well, and you have Attack of the Clones too. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're right. Hmm. See, you don't have to watch it to know it. Did you really know there were eight though? Or did you Google I did. that? 
No, I didn't Google, Google it. Google it Look, or I'm, no? I it. didn't. I'm playing with clay. I'm not, playing, I'm not Google it. Can we talk about the clay real quick? I'm having a side before you give a react. I would really like to see your hands at all times, Mangy. I put a camera I, on. You'd be like, what is going on with that little? Let, this is dry clay, though. So I was just drawing dots on it. But you're Sorry, still doing okay. something besides paying attention to your best friend in the podcast no, that we do together. Look, it's a little cat hand. Meow, 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 meow. Let me see your hands, Maggie. Put them on your mic. Put them on your mic, Maggie. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> are, you are you ready to react, Maggie? Yes. With your hands on your mic. I don't want to put you my hand on my a, mic. I'll put them here. If, okay. If you were a puppet, who would you want to do your voice? Daniel Matthews. Local That's puppeteer, cool. actor, comedian. He's on the main stage at Four Day Weekend here in Dallas. Uh, good friend of ours. We used to perform with him. He would do my voice and he would do it justice. Oh, my gosh. Daniel Matthews was a great choice. He's a great choice. He's was He was my choice. Obviously. You can't talk I about puppets and not like immediately think Daniel Matthews. Yeah. You know who else? Danny Neely. Mm. Yeah. Another he could Daniel. be yours. He'd be good. He'd be da- you want Danny Danny Neely would be mine and Daniel uh-huh. Matthews would be yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what's funny is that we picked men to do our voices. Well, Frank Oz does Miss Piggy. So. Touche. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack be a celebrity the gals can think of quick. It's time for You Don't Know Jack, (laughs) where Sarah and Maggie share some facts about a celebrity named Jack and try to guess who it is. Sarah, I don't know if you're going to get this, Jack, but I'm excited for you to try. This Jack is a 25-year-old American rapper and actor from Louisville, Kentucky. He's best known for his 2020 single, What's Poppin', which was made popular by trending TikTok audio and later remixes with DaBaby, Tori Linez, and Lil Wayne. In May of this year, he made his acting debut in the White Man Can't Jump remake playing Jeremy. Sarah, who is this Jack? Uh, is it Jack Harlow? What? How did you know that? How did you know really that? Smart. I'm really, really smart, and I'm really attuned to pop culture, and I'm hip, and I'm cool, and I know who Jack Harlow is. Hundred well, percent. Hundo. Tell he's, me about. Tell he's me about fire. Jack Harlow. <laughs> he's so fire. Um, he did the What's Poppin' song, as you've mentioned, which is one of my favorites. Oh, sing it for me. Okay. Um, da, 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 what's poppin'? Something like, was, I can't do it Jack justice. You know, it's not fair mm. to him, to me, and hmm. try and, and rip off that song. Huh. But well, it, what else yeah. do you know about Jack Carlo? Else? Jack, Jack Carlo. Did I say did I Jack. say Tori Linez, right? I didn't listen to that part. Why weren't you listening? All I heard, all I heard was you say Papa and I'm like I know who it is. It's my bestie. Everyone's favorite Jack Carlo. <laughs> Sarah, I don't call want to. I don't want to make call him an accusatory Jack statement. Jack. I don't. I don't want to like accuse you of something right now. So I'm just going to okay, ask a question. Just, just I'm just going to ask a question, and it's just an in theory question. Have you ever thought about? I know I've thought about it. Um, if someone says like, "I don't think you're going to get this," and then starts mm-hmm. reading mm-hmm. really slowly something, like pulling up the internet and googling it. Have you ever thought about that? I don't know. What? I have what? thought about it. I've never done it, but I've thought about it. I what? don't know. No. No. I look here. I've been following Jack Carlo since day one. You know, it's I I'm offended. You know, 
that you think I don't know who Jack Harlow is. He's got curly hair, you know? He he's uh, a white man. It's um mm-hmm. here's a fun fact about Jack Harlow. His middle name is Thomas, Jack Thomas Harlow. Uh-huh. And he was from Louisville, Kentucky, and he started his career in 2015 with the release of several EPs and mixtapes uh-huh. before he was signed to Don Cannon and DJ Drama's record label. Yeah. I. You know what's crazy about you saying that is it sounds so familiar to the Wikipedia page I was reading earlier. That's so wild. <laughs> Gosh, you're like <laughs> such a wealth of information, Sarah. I should have known better. I should have known you'd know who Jack Harlow was. <laughs> but you know what? Why is Jack Harlow so popular? Well, it seems that he's just as famous for his personality as he is for his music. His confidence, humor, and I'm sorry, mm-hmm. this person wrote sex appeal. Have you seen Jack <laughs> Harlow? This person? <laughs> Who's this person? <laughs> Another thing people also ask, does Jack Harlow have girlfriends? Well, Plural. Does he? What do you He's you know him enjoying so well. being single? Oh. He's apparently enjoying being single, but here's who he's been linked I'm not going to keep reading cuz I don't care who he's been linked to. Jack yeah. Harlow! <laughs> Maggie, are you ready for your fact? I am. This one got me really reeling. Psycho was the first movie to show a toilet flushing. What? Yeah. Isn't that wild? I don't even remember when the toilet flushes. Is it like before she gets in the shower? It's got to be around that time. Because I do remember the shot. It's an overhead shot of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but it's got to be before she gets in the shower, or maybe it's after she's. Spoiler alert: she's murdered in the shower. <laughs> uh, a movie from like nineteen. When was Psycho? Nineteen fifty-seven. So long ago. Black and white. It's fine. We're past that threshold of a acceptance. Mm-hmm. So don't yeah. DM us, or DM um, us if you've never seen Psycho. <laughs> Then we can talk about. I want all. I just want a quick aside. I do. I want all the DM'd opinions and hot takes. I want to have a dialogue. I want to be talking about why you're so upset that we spoiled Psycho. I want to hear it. I would like the DMs, please. DM it. Uh, Um, But yeah, I never. I guess I don't even like. Was there? Was there a doogie in it? There was no. I think it's just showed the flushing. Uh, I Googled it real quickly. And it's just, yeah, it's a shower scene. That I don't want to pull up the actual clip. Because yeah. Because I don't want this conversation to slow its roll. Oh, because it's going places. <laughs> it's when interesting. You, it's one you... of like the first movies, though. You know, if it had been like, um, so when you first said Psycho, in my head, I thought Scream. But then when you said the toilet flushing, I was like, oh, this is Psycho. Like Alfred Hitchcock. Why did you think? Why do you think scream? Because it's like a one word, scary word. And so in my mm, head, you said okay. psycho was the first to have a toilet flushing. And I was like, gosh, I can't believe it took all the way till 1990 to show a toilet. Probably because everyone was so prude about bathroom stuff. And then I was like, wait, bathroom mm-hmm. stuff, psycho, shower. That was like way earlier on in cinematic history. I but enjoyed cool to be the first. that. I enjoy that inside the mind of Rat Maggie Reith Austin mm. that you just took us on that journey. That Thank was you. that was beautiful. Thank was you. Beautiful. Yeah. It's rare um, that I can remember every single connection that's made in my brain, but this time I was like really paying attention. Is are you uh, doodling or playing with clay? I was. Ha ha! Gotcha! <laughs> Okay. Uh, Are you ready to react? I am. You mentioned watching movies and with Psycho being the first movie to show toilet flushing. I was curious, what's the first movie you remember seeing in a theater? Oh. Hmm. Okay. 
Well, so I know this was not my first movie that I saw in a theater, but this was my most memorable first movie experience. So I, I think I saw like Aladdin or something. And then I saw a bunch of movies in theaters, like Disney movies. But when I was in like summer before seventh grade, I was in Buffalo with my grandparents and my cousin and my brother. And we went and saw Rear Window at like a little art theater. And it was so memorable. The original? Yeah. Yeah. Because it was this old movie, but it was so spooky. And it was this like old theater. And it was like a daytime movie in the summer. And it was such a cool experience. And that was like my first like, oh, dang, movies are cool. Old movies are cool. I'm spookied out. I love that movie. And I say original because there's been several iterations of that movie. It's great. It's an awesome film. Uh, So... I remember my first, I think it was The Little Mermaid I saw in theater, but I like your twist on this. What's the most memorable and equally as important to the cinematic community, um, also seventh grade year for me, was Titanic. Oh, I went and saw that probably four, five, six times. And I I still have ticket stubs from when I saw them all those times. Very memorable, influential. One of the reasons I make movies now is because of Titanic. Uh, What's funny. So I was in fourth grade when Titanic came out and my friends, the Harper twins saw it like four or five, six times. And I remember thinking like, wow, we're in fourth grade. Like that's like a grown up movie, you know? But it it crossed, and they weren't they were like conservative folks, so you know, like you know like '90s conservative, like they weren't like risque watching was, Simpsons or something. But they, yeah, you know, so it's and, like not, it was nine or ten years old versus thirteen or fourteen, right? Yeah, but everyone was seeing yeah, it. I, like everyone came back to school for fourth grade, and they were like Titanic, a three hour long movie that I saw in theater eight times this summer, and I was like, I did not see that movie in theaters because i heard I, there was naky boobies in it i bet all those girls were liars flat out liars no way what? they saw it no way no way because this horned up 13 14 year old was all about it thank you so much for joining us if you enjoyed this episode we would love a review subscribe or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.